Wow. That's ridiculous. I think. It's crazy. Thank you, Abraham. Excellent job. Um, next up, we have Skip Newberry, who I consider the power behind the throne of Portland's open source uh, cities, sort of uh, what we're doing. Um, great guy. And he's going to talk about lessons learned from a regional approach to open. So when you're ready. So I'm Skip Newberry from the city of Portland. And last year, the city partnered with two separate but equally important groups. Uh, the software community and also public sector entities that collect data. And what I'm going to talk about is the story. So Portlanders love process, but they also love facial hair, namely ironic <laughs> facial hair. With civic apps, we decided to combine the two. You don't believe me? Look at Max Ogden over here. He's like the living embodiment of the program. Um, fun fact number two, we have a commission form of government, which means we have a mayor and four commissioners, each who are in charge of their own bureaus, and we have overlapping jurisdiction throughout the region with a variety of public sector players, so it's kind of messy. With Civic Apps, we decided to uh, create a common interface that would serve as a portal to all the data sets that were separately maintained by the data owners. This allowed us to avoid a host of legal issues, and it made for a more intuitive interface. So the lesson here is support and adoption equals success. Support and adoption by the users of data and apps, support and adoption by the public sector, and support and adoption by the software community. You need to have all three. Now, intergovernmental cooperation is not easy. Uh, you impose additional obligations and duties on a bureaucracy, they're going to push back. And in this case, uh, we, we did experience some pushback, um, both internally and externally. So we did have to resort to the nuclear option a couple of times, and by that I mean we convened a meeting with the mayor early on to communicate that this was very important from the very beginning at the highest levels of government. And that was absolutely crucial to set the stage. Now the real power is with the people, and by that I mean in order to avoid um, you know, election cycles and the project dying at that point, you have to have wide adoption from the community broadly defined. And uh, in this case, what we tried to do was get the word out as early as possible. One thing we did was we convened an advisory board with the community uh, at the very beginning of the contest. And um, they helped define the rules of the contest. They worked with us to kind of test ideas before we released them publicly. And one caveat to that is it's the first time that the public sector has to kind of set the stage for uh, you know, public engagement from there on. So choose wisely on your advisory board because you, know, you could have some serious problems if you don't choose carefully. Now roles are important and what we did was we, we had to kind of um, be agnostic with the, uh, the, the website. We couldn't brand it with the city of Portland if we wanted adoption from our, our data partners. And so with the community we also had to be mindful of the fact that we had to cede some control over the finished product. Ultimately, our goal is, you know, we decided supply data. And by supply, I mean generate new data sets regularly and maintain them in an ongoing basis. If you don't have that, you don't have a viable project. Now, the community played a number of roles um, with Civic Apps from the very beginning. We had some folks like Max who were creating, you know, an open API for the, um, the project to make the data a little bit more usable and more uh, accessible. Also, community-generated data sets were huge. Um, now, don't be afraid to put it out there. This is so important. Governments like to fully bake a project and then kind of foist it upon the public. But what we learned with this process is even with a half-baked project or a three-quarters baked project, the community, as long as it's communicated effectively, is going to run with it. Uh, make data accessible. When we launched, we didn't have an open API. We, we had bulk data sets. And thankfully, the community was able to come in and make it easier for both developers and for the general public. And, and that's key. Now, data. Um, many people think that Eva Longoria is, is, uh, is kind of hot. I'm, I'm one of them. Um, but she, if you're standing at your bus stop and, you know, you're waiting for your next bus, she's not entirely useful. So, you know, that's where data comes in, and that's the, the key challenge for government. And, and real-time data, now that's hot, and that's really where we're trying to head with civic, civic apps. You know, we'd love to have more real-time traffic data, um, public alerts, and what I want to talk about is a website we launched last year called publicalerts.org. And it's got real-time data feeds um, for traffic. Uh, when Obama was here, there was traffic, 
congestion all over the city last week. Um, so we had alerts there. And with Civic Apps, we hope to build out the mobile space as a complement to that website. So the future, uh, community-generated data sets, uh, better real-time data, more data. And also within, within the city, we want to try and get greater involvement from city employees, uh, bubbling up of innovative ideas that we can then release to the community. So we have an award ceremony coming up tomorrow night. It's more of a party. If anyone attended the last one, it was a great time. It's going to be here in downtown across Pioneer Square at Web Trends. I hope to see you all there. It's going to be free admission and free beer. Uh, and that's, that's really enough. Thanks.